everybody and welcome to this week's Design Cinema. So once again, we are going to shoot video to show you guys. And this is a continuation of the stuff we talked about last week. Uh, last week we focused on uh, inspiration of books and all those books who are art of books, you know, done by a lot of famous designers out there. This week we're going to focus on reference books, the kind of books that we actually use for design, right, and not to uh, get influence from but from understanding. So we're going to talk about the difference between why we have these versus the art of, as well as the digital books that you, I mean the digital references that you have on your computer because there are advantages and disadvantages to both. So myself, I have a ton of these books in my home. This you're showing, what I'm showing you guys here is a very small collection of them. So I have tons of these but I also have thousands and thousands of images on my computer. And again, they're used differently and they have, they both have their strengths and weaknesses and I'll talk about that in this episode. So anyways, let's get started with some of these uh, subject matters. All right. Okay, so let's talk about these books. But before I get started, I'm going to mention one more designer that I forgot to uh, show you guys last week, which is John Berkey. He is my all-time favorite painter for spaceships and sci-fi. Now, this guy also paints traditional stuff like houses and things, but he specializes in this type of stuff, which is massive spaceships. Uh, most of you guys probably already know who he is, John Berkey. But if you go through here, I mean, it is the coolest stuff ever. Uh, I totally love his painting style. This is something a lot of us in the industry also admire greatly. Um, so yeah, this is John Berkey, one of my huge influences in terms of uh, digital painting or just traditional painting uh, as a whole. So I'm going to put him there. Okay, so now let's go back to our, the world of reference, right? The very different from this type of stuff here. Um, now, why do we have this kind of stuff? Why do we have all these books? Now, you notice every single book here are real. There's no art of books here. There's no art of anything. Everything is about realistic things. Because as a designer, the most important thing for us is to create something that's not real, something that's made up in your imagination. However, when the audience sees it, they believe that it is real. So when they see a vehicle like a tank or, a, or some kind of uh, spaceship or helicopter that you make up for a film, as soon as they see it, they get it. They go, I, I get it. That, that is a vehicle for flying people around. That is a vehicle that, that has a turret and looks like a tank, right? But you want them to get it super quick, some, uh, especially in film industry where you only have a few seconds on screen to understand what's happening. So as a designer, you have to almost em embody everything that's in this real world, all the stuff you see here, and transfer that to an imaginary design and change the design somewhat, however, always have functionality and this kind of understanding coming across. Because being different to be different is not what we do in our business, right? We do things that are different slightly, so you get it. You bring the cool factor in, you change the forms, however, the functionality or the understanding design doesn't change much, right? If you guys name all the big films out there, if you watch, you know, like Avatar just came out, look at all the ships in there. You get it, you look at the stuff, you, you understand what they do. So that's kind of uh, what designers do, and to be able to achieve that, you have to understand the real world, and every subject matter is important, from architecture, from how a city is built, to how uh, biology works, what a, how the insect uh, crawls around, all these things. The, as much as you know, the better it is for industry, and that's where references come into play. Um, Let's get started with some of this stuff. This is, um, last week we talked about the toy airplanes. Well, I have books on the same kind of subject matter. These are World War II airplane books. So these are beautiful photos of various World War II airplanes and bombers, you can see here. So this is a great reference for when those toys are not in front of you or you don't have the toys for these. So this, this plane right here is the one I showed you last week on my desk, right, the um, SBD. Um, so this is great. Now I have another one here, uh, also World War II, called Flying Aces. Now this has to come into play when I talk about the understanding part. So in this book are real nice paintings of World War II airplanes, but on the side here are little descriptions of the missions these planes carried out. A lot of them are actually scenarios, the flying logs from the pilots themselves, both from the German side and also the Allies, Allies side, right? And the thing is, reading this to me is more important than looking at this image because the mind is extremely strong, right? All you guys have imagination. So when someone describes, you know, we have enemies coming in at six o'clock and they're coming in from the sun, they want to make a quick bank, these things you can see in your head. And that stuff co comes into play when you are starting to painting uh, uh, scenarios that are very similar. So maybe you're doing a giant space battle. But in this space battle, you could carry all this kind of stuff that you read here into your work. So you know, for me, obviously these paintings are great, but it's what's here that's more critical for me. Okay. So this little bit of uh, just some of the story stuff. Now let's go to these books we have here. Uh, this is called the Eyewitness Books. These are absolutely one of the best reference books to get. If you can find them in your local bookstore, get them all. They're the best. Uh, and 
Thing is, this is seed book number 112. Uh, they literally have hundreds of these. You can see here, you know, a bunch of these. Now, you'll find these generally in the children's section. For some reason, they don't put these in the uh, reference or I don't know. I guess they, it's for learning, so that's why they put in the kids section. Uh, at least in the States, in Borders and Barnes & Noble, it's always found them in about the kids section. Um, and they search pretty hard. They usually have like three or four in one bookstore, three or four in another one. Uh, but I have a ton of these. Now, the reason why they're so good is because they're aimed for kids. They're, they're to teach how things work. So when you go inside them, this one, is World War II, yeah? big subject matter for us designers. And uh, you can see here, they have everything, you know, the radios and, and all the, the telegraph, the French resistance, the, the Jeep. But again, just like the other book, is the text. The text is important. This is a visual uh, reference for you to kind of just see what a Jeep looks like. But to really understand it, you have to read the text. These things describe what they do. And this is the kind of stuff we carry into our everyday work this kind of understanding. So we look at it as like, what is this? You know, oh, it's a bombing site or, or you know, whatever that thing is or something to uh, uh, aim guns down at. You know, the more you understand, the easier it is to design. So again, this is the um, eyewitness books. Find these. These are absolutely my favorite reference books. I use these like crazy on projects, right? And they have every subject matter. You know, just flipping through, you can see there's like trains, shard, pyramids, cowboy, uh, magnet, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, invention. The subject matters are so cool for us designers. All right, next we have these kind of clip art books. I have a bunch of these as well. I have no idea how I even found these. I think just in the bargain sections of uh, like bookstores, they cost like five bucks or something, you know, yeah, cheap, right? And what they are is these kind of uh, old style etching uh, images that you find in the old times where they etched these on wood and ink printed them. Uh, but what I love about this is that you're kind of seeing the world through the eyes of turn of the century. These are all done, I believe, probably around the 1900s at most, all right, the latest. So everything here is quite old. So you're kind of seeing the world in a, in a simpler times or how they thought. Because to do this today, even if you ask a designer to do this today, it would be a little harder because now we're exposed to internet and technology that to, to do this kind of art, to even think about these machines, uh, it's very hard to get to get that stuff out of your mind. So th what I see here is pure. Because I don't, I'm not even sure if some of these things are absolutely real, but they're invention drawings, like this kind of steam thing. I have no idea what it is here. Uh, but they contain a ton of interesting things. This book here is the same same thing. This one is trades and occupations. This one is transportation. But everything here goes to about early turn of the century, 1900s at most, like uh, steam, steam engine trains, right? So everything you see here is super old. You know, like still horse carriage, you can see the Model T is in here. And this for us designers is a whole new way of seeing the world. It allows us to kind of uh, perceive the machinery and the designs as they saw it back in the days. Yeah. Right, next we have architecture. Architecture is a big important thing in my career because I studied architecture uh, prior to going into the industrial design. So I always love, love buildings. Now as a design or as a reference, architecture is great because things like uh, buildings tells you a lot about the culture and the civilization that built them. So you can study just from the architecture alone the kind of religions a culture have, the kind of uh, the view of the world, how they militarize their buildings, how they build forts, uh, how they perceive their the level, the strength. All this stuff is very important, and architecture tells it all. So this book is all ancient architecture, a lot of uh, stuff from like Turkey and uh, you know Greek and Egypt, and again, a lot of text. I read all this stuff because the pictures, yes, even though there's only four pictures on a page, the text fills uh, so much more in your brain. And the key, again, is the understanding. Looking at a photo, just like, eh, okay, that's a photo of a building, looks pretty cool. But to understand how that was built, why it was built, where did they get the materials, how they constructed, that's the key. Yeah. So this is just some uh, old architecture. Uh, this is, uh, again, architecture, but a little bit more modern. This is Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, a very famous architect. For most of you guys probably know him. So this is kind of just a, a, a collection of his work. Uh, the reason why I have a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright books is because his stuff is featured in a lot of movies, uh, such as Blade Runner, uh, Gattaca, Star Wars. They have a lot of uh, architecture directly from Frank Lloyd Wright because his designs are uh, very much ahead of his time. Just like Sid Mead in the industrial design side, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright did a lot of really, really cool stuff uh, in the real world. So we kind of see the materials he used, the kind of shapes he chose to uh, uh, put into his buildings. So it's great. So this is just a collection of that. All right, so let's move, uh, continue on uh, with some of these other books. Okay, let's continue with uh, the books that we have in front of me here. So these are sort of like clip art, a lot of reference, reading books. And then I have the 
picture books, the kind of books that doesn't contain too much information in terms of uh, what it is, but a ton of images. So here I have, this is one of my favorite books, it's called Warriors. Uh, in here, it kind of go through the history of all the stuff you can see here. You know, it's got a lot of reading, however, it's like an encyclopedia of content. And this is great for us, you can see here, this is medieval armor from, uh, this is like um, some kind of Middle Eastern armor, perhaps from the uh, Ottoman Empire. And it goes to like you know, India, right? So it goes all the way up to today. So if you clip all the way up to the very back, we probably have the modern uh, soldier from Vietnam all the way up to, uh, yeah, I think Vietnam's the high as it goes. But so it spans a couple hundred years of uh, armory. So this kind of stuff, obviously this is just one of the books, is great for us because it's kind of like a library or a, encyclopedia of information in visuals and that's great as a uh, reference book next are just some random subjects I picked from my bookshelf say so, like the world of trucks you know these things are super cheap here US 599 you know what I'm saying so it's like cheaper than the uh, price of lunch that you get all this content right? is it just trucks um, the reason why they're so cheap because I think normal people don't buy this kind of stuff. You know, it's like super boring. I don't see any family buying this kind of book, right? So it's good for us though because they come on sale and they're extremely cheap. And I have a ton of these as well. So just random subjects like trains, right? Here I have, for example, and, um, I have something called classic trains, super books. Same kind of thing, super cheap. I got this for only fifteen dollars. Um, just ton, a ton of images of big giant steam trains. You can see here, right? And it's great. Yeah, I love this kind of stuff. So. This is a good time to mention a little bit about why books are important. Because yes, you could say I Google is around, or I just Google all this stuff. The reason why is because think about it: stuff on the internet, this will never show up. The internet has copyright-free stuff mostly. So if you're googling images, of course you're gonna find a ton. But a lot of it is taken probably by regular people. You know, just people um, that don't, you know, family photos or just reference images are taken with their own camera, so they're not concerned about copyright. But images like these from, from the actual books, you'll never find it on the internet because this is copyrighted into the book, just like the Warriors book I show you. You're never gonna find those images. The publishers will not let those, you know, like these kind of, um, let me just flip through one here. Like this kind of image, you're not gonna find it online because this is copyrighted to this book. So that's why physical books is so important. The stuff you find online, of course, is really, really good, and we'll go through that in the second part of this video. But having physical books allows you to see a lot more content that you might not otherwise get, right? So here's another one, Concept Cars, not only $16 book, right? From the 1930s to present, which I think it's only year 2000 or so. Um, but it's cool, you know, just see, black and white Concept Cars from back in the days. Uh, all the way till um, today and get the Ferraris and these kind of things, so it's pretty cool. Alright, so let's move on to, so this kind of a little bit snippet of the kind of uh, reference book I have in terms of photo refs and encyclopedia and just content. And now I'm going to go to this little section here, which is magazines. Um, once again, it's about understanding, right? It's not just about the drawing. I think for a designer, I think half of it is understanding, the other half is technical skills, which is the painting and the drawing side. Uh, the understanding is really, really critical. So when you're reading books, I suggest reading stuff that also helps you understand, like National Geographic. I think every designer subscribes to National Geographic because there's nothing but content and they cover everything from architecture to history to biology, right? Whatever you can think of, they cover it. Uh, so this is the recent copy of this month. And you can see here is more. I just tons of these things, you know, under Paris this last month uh, episode. Uh, and then I have magazines of knowledge. These are some um, BBC publications, which is kind of randomly pick a subject matter, like how does asteroids uh, float around and destroy the city? They talk about it. So very random subjects. Um, and these, of course, I love airplanes, as you guys probably already guessed, and I have a ton of these magazines. Uh, these are UK publications, because out here in Singapore, you can't get the US ones, which kind of sucks. Um, but the UK ones are pretty cool, so fly past. These things, just like the reference book, contain a lot of stories of uh, World War II battles and these things, and that's the stuff, and also things like this, orthographic images. Um, great for us designers. All right, so let's uh, finish this piece by the last little thing I'll talk about. All right, guys, so let's talk about something uh, that's a huge secret, I think, for me in terms of being a designer, because right in front of me here, this, this, if you guys want to know the secret design, is all right here, classic novels. The reason why I say that is because these things, they're just like the reference books in front of me here, except this is visuals for the mind. It's not visual for the eyes, and that's a big difference in terms of how you get your information, because these things here, like the concept thing here, right? You can always look at this car and go, that's pretty cool. You could get reference from this, you get influence from this, but I cannot use this design. This design is trademarked by somebody, right? Somebody came up with this. However, when you guys read a novel, for example, George Orwell's 1984, 
he describes a lot of cool sceneries. For example, a giant fortress floating above London, protecting the borders. Now he described it in words, but it's up to you and your imagination to form what that image looks like. And I think everybody who reads this book will have a different visual interpretation of what that might look like. So then, therefore, this idea is always trapped in this book. But it's up to you with your imagination, your hands, and drawing skills to take that out. And that's very different than looking at something that's real. All right, you guys see the point here. So if you want good ideas, man, these books have it all. I mean, these things talk about everything you can imagine. That is far ahead of his times. This describes stuff that you've never seen before in reality. And so, if you're a good designer, have a, with a very active imagination, it's all here. So this is for me is my biggest secret in terms of how to come up with cool designs. It's all here. These guys described it already, right? What you gotta do is just take that those words, form in your head, and come up with something cool, right? So I'll go through some of my favorite books. This is uh, of course 1984. This is a classic that all of you guys should read. Uh, for Fahrenheit 451, another great book. Mona Lisa Overdrive, which is a big influence on films such as The Matrix. If you read it, it's actually like, oh, look, they, t they talk about something called The Matrix. Um, right, right before the film, by the way. Um, I, Robot. Now, this and the film are nothing related. The only uh, common similarity between the film of this uh, book and the book is the name. That's it. You know, that Will Smith one is terrible, right? Whatever is in that, in that film has nothing to do with, uh, with, with this book, okay? So the, the content of this book is way ahead of its time. This is written way back in the days, I believe in the 50s. Um, so the ideas behind this kind of coined a lot of stuff we see today in sci-fi films. Uh, I believe even words like Android and Robot, these are new terms. Uh, I think the word Robot is from him. Um, so anyways, that's really cool. Here's Brave New World, another book that influenced a lot of films out there, such as um, Gattaca. Yeah. Here's some classic. This is a Heart of Darkness uh, by Joseph Conrad. Great read. Um, influence for uh, uh, Apocalypse Now, I believe. Uh, uh, and these kind of uh, books. And of course, my favorite films of all time is Blade Runner. And that film is influenced by this book right here, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? So these are all must-reads, I think, for all of us, especially the industrial designers working in the, uh, the kind of uh, film industry and do a lot of sci-fi machinery design. It's all here, right? And this is just a small collection of the novels we have. So if you want to get an get a edge in terms of design or just even stir your imagination, read books. This is something I think even some of our younger students don't do anymore. You know, everything's out on the Internet. We're just kind of Google stuff. And they're not aware that this great content is out there. So if you want to have just fill your brain with the cool as ideas possible get it from here so anyways this kind of wraps up the kind of the physical book stuff and the next section here I'm gonna talk about the um, the references I have on my computer and how to get them and how to uh, uh, you know uh, organize them and stuff like that okay so let's move on to the digital side all right